it's a burning topic that we should be discussing today. So with this, I am really happy to introduce to you our panelists who are experts in this field. Uh, they have very, uh, they, they're accomplished and they have great expertise that we can use. Uh, we can learn from, from them and also implement it practically even in Nagaland. And if you're not logging in from Nagaland elsewhere in, in, in the region also, we can, I'm sure we can use their knowledge and wisdom. Um, so with this, I want to introduce to you our first panelist. Uh, she is Savita Hiremat. Uh, she's a very well-known uh, waste management activist and a core member of the Solid Waste Management Roundtable Bangalore. She's also um, worked with the Deccan Herald, the Times of India, the New Indian Express and Acharya Institute of Journalism. And she's been working tirelessly uh, for setting up uh, a very highly advanced and end-to-end -end zero waste, uh, solid waste management system for her community in, in Bangalore. And this was picked up by the Times of India and they've picked it up as the best model to emulate all over Karnataka. So we see that she has a great experience and expertise in helping us also how to manage waste. And her focus is on local solutions, not expensive ones, but very cost effective and how everyday people can learn to uh, manage waste. So she'll be talking more about this. She's a consultant of the Endlessly Green uh, Consultancy, which is an end-to-end -end solid waste management uh, consultancy. So she has experience with working with um, corporates, with uh, apartments, with NGOs, with schools, and many other uh, institutions, including hotels and wedding halls, how to, you know, effectively uh, and self-sustainingly manage waste. So um, Savita Hiremat will be our first panelist. And the second, our second panelist is Mr. Sri, sorry, Mr. C. Srinivasan. He's a project director and consultant of Solid and Liquid Resource Management, SLRM. He's also the resource person for the SLRM project, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs uh, India, and the Apex Monitoring Com uh, Committee, a uh, special invitee for uh, the National Green Tribunal, New Delhi. He has over 27 years of designing and coordinating uh, environmental and sanitation projects. So he has his models like the North India model where he's worked in Delhi, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh, and he's also worked in the South, the South India model, the Northeast model where he's worked in Assam and Tripura, Meghalaya, Sikkim. And he's also worked in um, many areas such as Burmi, caste and culture, and he's also done projects in apartment uh, complex models. And he's introduced the SLRM concept to uh, even countries such as Nepal and the United States of America. He's also designed and coordinated projects in institutions, many institutions, such as the CMC Hospital, Bangalore, and IIT Chennai. He's also done uh, municipalities and special panchayats, village panchayats, etc. And he's also uh, won many awards in the college for his work. One of, he has many, so I will not be uh, telling you everything, but I'll just pick up a few and tell you what awards he's received. He's received the People's Hero Award by Citizens for Change International Chennai. He's also won the Abdul Kalam Sabha Award 2015. He's also won the Green Hero Award Rotary Club, and also the Ashoka Fellowship has been awarded to him by Ashoka Innovation Public in Washington, D.C., USA. So, um, we see that he has vast experience and he has so, so much wisdom to uh, impart to us. Our third panelist is uh, Ms. Niktangla Jamir, also known as Nikki, and she's our very own uh, solid waste management expert from Nagaland. She's the founder of uh, environment based, uh, environmental based NGO called Living for Environment based in Singapore, Nagaland. She's the co founder of uh, Ekron International a social enterprise on waste management. She's a, uh, she's a low graduate and she has experience working with uh, the office of the chief secretary uh, as an assistant legal consultant. She's also drafted the Nagaland Solid Waste Management Policy and Strategic Draft 2018. 
and uh, Dimapur Solid Waste Management Draft Bylaws uh, 2018. So it's really important from a local context that we listen to her and get to know as much as possible and also put up questions for her so that we can all work together. So um, with this, I would like to give time to our first panelist, uh, Ms. Savita Hiremat. Please take your time. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you so much. Um, is it okay if I turn off my video during the presentation because there is some bandwidth problem? Yeah, please go ahead. No problem. There's bandwidth. We can't. I, I, shall, shall I start sh uh, sharing this? Yes, you can. Yeah, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Savita from Bangalore, and um, uh, thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be presenting my views in front of all of you. And uh, my, um, you know, uh, someone I really looked up to, that is uh, uh, Mr. Velo Srinivasan. And uh, I never had a, a chance to meet him. And uh, uh, I'm meeting him today, and I'm really, really, really uh, happy about that. Okay, I would like to start my presentation with uh, one of the quotes by my favorite authors, uh, that is Gay Hawkins, that uh, waste is inevitable and uh, how we deal with this is in the, uh, is the terrain of ethics. Next, please. Yes, waste is a byproduct of uh, human activity. Uh, we simply can't, uh, we can't avoid it. Uh, but what we can do is to deal with it in the right manner and make sure that, you know, it does not reach the landfill. So actually, my journey began as a woman and a mother and uh, in a community volunteer. And from there on, I moved on to, um, you know, uh, to the state level right now where we are. Can campaigning uh, for farmers. Next slide. Yes. <clears throat> Well, it all uh, actually began with three minutes. Next slide. Thousand eleven and twelve. What you see here is uh, bucketfuls of segregated waste being ready. Located in What you see here is this, please. Next slide. Well, uh, all the segregation uh, fell in place uh, rather quickly, quickly in our uh, community. Um, but I struggled for nearly 24 to 26 months to succeed in uh, setting up a kitchen waste, co kitchen waste composting system. Um, you know, nowadays there are quite a few products in the market which have made composting very easy. But back in 2011-12, there were not enough good solutions in the market that could suit our apartment's need. So even vermicomposting was not uh, easy to come by, uh, come by as I went uh, wrong with certain things and suffered a huge failure. All this because I had no prior experience in composting at all, you know, especially on a large scale basis. But I was not, not the one to give up. Uh, finally, we uh, did succeed in both. Uh, and those were one of the most uh, beautiful moments of my life. And they still are. Here in the, the, in the first slide, you see a kitchen waste being uh, mixed by the housekeepers. And you see a beautiful amount of compost sitting there. And this is our, our vermicomposting um, tank, where one of the residents is uh, sprinkling the worms into the tank. Next, please. Yeah. So once a, a zero waste community was set up, which was celebrated by the media, uh, I focused on uh, my writing more than ever. I was blogging even before this, actually. Uh, but uh, SWM gave my writing a new meaning and direction. So I started documenting all the available composting methods in my blog, and it is still it is still the only go-to source for detailed write-ups on everything everything to do with SWM. I also began to collaborate with uh, fellow volunteers and uh, joined SWM um, which is uh, actually uh, now it is a non not for profit NGO, um, you know, comprising individual activists. And uh, I also became an active campaigner for a healthy living environment where trash is properly dealt with. Next, please. Yeah. Um, 
Actually, I delivered talks at uh, some prestigious institutions and pressed for holistic local solutions wherever uh, I was invited. I also helped, and I still do, actually, uh, scores of communities in Bangalore and beyond uh, to set up their own uh, sustainable waste management system to come up with highly nutritious compost. Uh, because composting is obviously the best to way to recycle all the biodegradable waste, in my view. Next, please. <clears throat> So actually, um, till now, I, um, you know, uh, it was all about uh, uh, turning uh, waste into compost and uh, educating people, creating awareness about how important segregation is and what is the value of uh, that particular ritual, you know, and uh, what the power of harn harnessing that ritual. Uh, but actually now, you know, after all this, uh, sometime in 2018, 19, uh, you know, uh, there came a twist in the story. Uh, many apartments actually started composting thanks to the activism by uh, you know uh, SWMRT and uh, you know other volunteers spread across Bangalore, which put sort of a, you know positive uh, pressure on the civic authorities to avoid landfilling and go for in situ composting as a holistic solution. Uh, but the but then the communities who had taken to composting did not know how to dispose of excess compost. They were producing a lot of it. Uh, many volunteers started bringing up this issue on all forums. Uh, that's when we at uh, SWMRT started thinking about it seriously. Of course, the loop had to be closed. Uh, segregation to composting, composting to uh, gar gardening, or organic gardening or organic farming. So as you can imagine, there was only one way to achieve that and uh, to take the soil back to where it belongs, I mean farmland. Uh, so we met some farmers and compost producers from apartments and brought them together in a WhatsApp group. Next, please. So... This campaign uh, did call for a lot of effort, actually, and uh, perseverance. And uh, when we launched this campaign, a couple of sales did happen. What you see here are pictures from my apartment where the first sale happened. Uh, after a couple, of, a couple more, it sort of came to a halt as farmers had misconceptions about what they called the city compost. They thought it was bad and will bring diseases to their farms and, you know, has uh, high uh, heavy metal contamination and all those things. Uh, more than this, the transportation and labor cost made it difficult for them to buy it from apartments. Although the compost is uh, priced at only one rupees, uh, uh, one and a half rupees per kg, even that became unaffordable as we have mostly small farmers with the limited resources. Next, please. But still, you know, we kept persisting and kept calling uh, the farmers, and then I try, you know, I try to persuade them by giving you examples some, of some success stories. Uh, we tried looking for uh, farmers uh, farming close to apartments so that transport cost would come uh, become affordable. Uh, things actually started moving, uh, finally. Next. So as you can see here, we have farmers who, you know, who load up truckloads of compost and they take it to their farmland. I really feel very happy to see these images, actually. You know, it's, uh, it's a dream come true for me. Next, please. So when, uh, uh, you know, what's happening currently is, you know, when one farmer sees another going for holistic farming, you know, using the organic methods, uh, you know, he or she is uh, bound to get influenced. And that's what is happening currently. Obviously, you know, uh, nothing succeeds like this has success. Next, please. So here is the far farmer, farmer uh, Kiran Jairaj. And uh, he's from Kunigal. It is about 100 kilometers from Bangalore. And he's an educated young man. And uh, it is so nice to see his uh, commitment to grow fruits and vegetables in just one acre farm. And uh, he has picked up compost multiple times already. Thank you. Next. Okay, so in less than actually three months, you know, our, um, although it was launched sometime in 2018-19, uh, the whole uh, group became active uh, only in June 2020. Uh, so in less than three months, we are, uh, Swachagraha, Swachagraha Compost Connect Network has helped uh, uh, compost producers to sell about, uh, you know, 38 tons of compost. And, uh, you know, honestly, I, I never thought we would go this far, uh, given how gloomy uh, things were in the beginning. Next. Yeah. One of the reasons for starting this campaign was because, uh, you know, we urbanites uh, get everything from uh, the surrounding rural areas, but nothing goes back to them. If anything, it's only our garbage, as you might know. I don't know what's happening in Nagaland, but it is, that is precisely what's happening in uh, Bangalore and I'm sure about other metros as well. Um, moreover, uh, the situation of soil health is also extremely disturb disturbing everywhere. So it, it only makes sense, you know, when the educated urbanites like us think of our rural counterparts before throwing uh, precious uh, biodegradable uh, waste day in and day out. 
Uh, after all, nothing can replenish degraded soil as uh, compost does. Right? Next one. Next and last. Yes. Well, this has been the story so, so far, and I don't know how many more turns will reach the farmland in the coming years. But what I do know is, uh, you know, as a lead campaigner of Swachagraha Compost Connect, uh, is that whoever adopts sustainable farming methods, they'll sure have a lot to re rejoice in. I hope you all agree with me. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, um, Ma'am Savita. Thank you for that very inspiring story and your uh, journey so far. I Thank you. I think uh, all our participants will have some questions for you. They would like to be like you. Uh, because you're, the, you're a champion in, uh, in composting as well as working with the community. So I, I, we have a lot to take away from what you have presented. And so we'll wait for the question and answer session later on. Uh, now we'll move on to our next panelist, um, Mr. Shreesh Nivasan. Thank you so much for your time here. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Can you. Can you open the screen? Because I'm not able to see you. I'm presenting my from, uh, from my laptop. Can you open this? Uh, Sandeep, are you there? Can uh, yeah, one second. Yeah, sorry, it, it went off. I'll do it again. Oh. Yes, sir. Now you can. Now, you can. sorry, it, it got cut. You can do it now. You are able to view this. Um, good evening. Uh, this is Srinivasan from Vellu, Tamil Nadu. Uh, this is related to uh, solid and liquid resource management, which is the latest subject. Uh, initially, we started this project in 1997 in Vellu, Tamil Nadu, without having any experience. We called it as a garbage compost project. Then after that, a lot of mistakes we did. Stage by stage, we changed all the, corrected all our mistakes. And uh, from 1997 to 2000, um, then we made a lot of mistakes. Each and every mistake brought a lot of experience. Based on that, uh, the concept was improved. And finally, 2010, I got the real face of garbage. What is the garbage and what is the risk? So while I was there in Mysore as a consultant for solid waste management, that time I got a very bad experience with the local people for starting the uh, decentralized solid and liquid resource management project. That time people got uh, six doubts uh, so that uh, the doubt should be cleared. Otherwise, they never allow us to start the project in the in their wards. First problem they're facing is they're saying garbage uh, uh, garbage looks ugly. They don't want to see the garbage in the ward level. And second, they told there will be some smell, uh, badbu, and uh, they were told uh, stink, durgan, then kida, makki, and also they told uh, there will be some uh, disease because of the garbage stagnating in the ward level. So finally, I told them if all six problems are not uh, not there in the execution time. Are they ready to agree? And finally, everybody agreed to start. That's how this project concept came. So this is nothing but solid and liquid resource management. Here it's very simple concept: a garbage-free, roadside dustbin-free, dumping site-free uh, municipalities and urban bodies or rural bodies. So this is a problem we are facing everywhere from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. We are just keeping the roadside dustbin and people throwing all the garbage in that area. It's overflowing. And nobody see what's happening in the bottom of this garbage. If you go and lift one garbage, you can see plenty of worms and maggots. Uh, this is all uh, uh, Maki's larva stage, we call it. For example, if you just remove one garbage from that bottom. Uh, so all these uh, maggots will become pupa stage. And a big pupa will release one more month. So that's how uh, garbage uh, creates one problem to second, second to third. Like that, plenty of problems have been addressed. Uh, if 
you have one sim, sim, uh, sing, uh, simple sick, uh, chicken waste, one single. And we will throw the garbage on the car. Nobody knows what's happening there. So this is a situation uh, where uh, the garbage roadside dustbins are available. So where we made the mistake exactly. The mistake is like this. Every 12 hours collection system that is called SLRM concept. So uh, before it start decomposing, we just calculated the time. So whatever we uh, chop the vegetables and the fruits and other things in the morning, it should be collected in the evening. Whatever we collect, chop in the evening, it should be collected in the morning. That means morning seven to nine collection and evening four to six collection, two time per day collection, non-stop 365 days. That's how we collect the resource, not garbage. If the same material lying in your home for more than 24 hours, more than 12 hours, then smell starts. Once smell starts, uh, maki will come and they start laying the eggs on it. Then automatically it becomes garbage. If it is a Saturday, Sunday holiday, then Monday garbage collectors will come. Then it's automatically 48 hours. It will be stinking and the worms, kida will start coming out. 72 hours, you can see the maki or the maggots automatically. So that means we don't want 72 hours collection. We don't want 48 hours collection. We don't want 24 hours collection. If it is resource management, less than 12 hours collection. That means morning seven to nine collection. The same house, same family, again in the evening, four to six collection. Two times per day, if you do, nothing will be called waste. Everything is a raw material. So whenever you collect like this, you can take organic materials uh, around. Uh, we So far, we identified, uh, um, just a minute. 60 items have been identified so far. So generally people say it's composting and other things. Here it is totally different. Uh, we identified each and every piece of the organic material available there. So each and every item we have separate, separate project. So that means we will convert everything into a beautiful resource and cash. So if you handle everything perfectly, then the outcome will be very good. If you throw everything to, uh, all together in a compost bed, then uh, it's uh, difficult for us to manage while saving everything will comes together. So these are the organic items so far we identified uh, in India and each and every items uh, we are handling uh, separately. The challengeable items is non-vegetarian. So right now the non-vegetarian, we got very simple solution, pot method. So within 60 days, uh, we get a liquid manure through the non-vegetarian items. Now recently we added the water hyacin also in this. So that means the organic items, we are divided into 60 items, 60 categories and convert into cash. Uh, inorganic items, inorganic items, paper, we segregate 15 types, cardboard nine, plastic items, 64 categories, plastic cover 38, metal 21, rubber 12, and glass bottles, 26 types and 122 categories. All these 169 categories can be sold to the recycling factories or big kabadi walas easily. And finally, what is the problem we are facing? The problem we are facing is about um, non-recyclable items. Um, like um, these are the non-recyclable items where we need to reduce it uh, stage by stage and ask them to use alternative for this. These are the 15 items where there is no market for the uh, purchasing people. And our SHGs, uh, self groups are struggling to sell it or uh, we can find some temporary solution but not permanent solution. So we try to see Alternative for all these 15 items. Once you find the alternative for this, these all items never come to the garbage and uh, whatever come in our inorganic item, it can be sold directly. So that's how the project started stage by stage. Now we can see um, how this project was uh, initiated in different places. Very, very simple project like like, like to share with you. Uh, uh, recently, we started in UDP, Karnataka also. Where, uh, we introduced only tricycles. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, evening, there will be uh, awareness meetings and IEC programs. Then um, sun Sunday morning, the dustbin will be distributed. Dustbins are designed uh, perfectly uh, for people to understand about the organic, inorganic, and um, all the items are mentioned here. So because of this, more than 80% of the people can segregate on the first day itself. So there is a, a three holes are been there in the bottom of these uh, buckets so that people never misuse these buckets for washing clothes or some other purpose. What we call garbage. See, normally, uh, if you go to the kitchen, you can see all these vegetables. All it is a vegetables. But once you start chopping uh, and removing all unwanted materials like fiber, which have seeds, uh, seed cover, and uh, roots and other things, uh, 
finally, we remove all the items and keep it in the green color bucket. So this is a green color bucket. So we removed all the unwanted portion, which is not required for cooking purpose, and kept in the green green color bucket. We say this is kachara. This is garbage. If you, if you say this is kachara, this is also kachara. If it, this is a sabji, this is a part of the sabji which is not required for cooking. That's all. Until twelve hours, this is pakka raw material. After twelve hours, start decomposing, and that smell attracts the flies, and flies will come and lay the eggs, and then it spoils the whole thing. That's how the garbage starts. So now we introduce this uh, tricycle method. Uh, then uh, we issue two buckets to each and every family. Dustbins, <laughs> and we. Uh, Uh, train the people, and uh, we add six people for every three hundred families. Minimum two fifty families to maximum three hundred families. Uh, there is a five plus one five person. One person, the first person standing here is a unit in charge, tenth pass minimum. Remaining five people are uh, less than tenth standard or uneducated. So out of five person, uh, she will take off on Monday. Other person Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That means weekly seven days holidays will be carried at uh, different days. That means seven days two time collection is ensured. we brought the garbage into essential service after 72 73 years of independence still we are struggling with garbage because we never brought the garbage into essential service so here as like a hospital like fire service and ambulance service here we brought the sanitation the garbage also in the essential service because of that there is no holiday for uh, one full day so here the turn duty is been uh, allocated and now the today is monday you can see the people are moving as uh, in charge is going with the register checking whether uh, source segregation is done or not and a uh, green bucket goes to green color compartment red color goes to red color compartment and then um, this is the way we will collect so if you see the source segregation the people are because everything is printed on the bucket Even the shopkeepers, if so, shopkeepers five hundred rupees penalty, so they never make the mistake. So like this, we will collect all the organic, inorganic. Today we need to break the mental block of the people, so we welcome the tricycle first day. All these days we say kachra kachra. Now you can see people are throwing it because inside the vehicle, inside the vehicle there is a lot of money. We call it as a garbage. Now it is all cash in different form. So it's cash. That's that means Lakshmi. We are welcoming the Lakshmi to come inside. Everybody pray the vehicle and uh, inviting the vehicle to come inside. And then we are opening the tricycle. Now just watch this. If it is a kachara, definitely there will be flies, house flies. You can see that there is not even a single flies inside the vehicle because before it starts smelling, it was collected from the uh, households. So we are opening the tricycle. This is a first day collection. You can see less than two hours collection. That means the material is not smelling. It looks fresh, so the smell not reach the flies. There is not even a single fly. That means this is called a resource collection. It is not a waste collection. This is called resource collection. Every two hours collection system, and then the, from the back side entry, we just open the gate and remove all the inorganic item first from the back side. And uh, she is our district collector and the uh, rotary members and all our people. See, without even mask, they are standing because there is no smell at all. There is no flies, no smell because it is all unwanted materials from that two fifty six two fifty six families. And uh, then uh, evening collection. Just see that uh, it's overflowing. People are uh, no? they understood that all the roadside dustbins are removed. There's no other option. They have to throw only in the tricycle. So whatever we are seeing is the unwanted portion of the unwanted materials from the 250 families in the evening collection. Like that morning, evening, two time we collect, and then after removing the inorganic from the backside, we remove the partition, the middle. This is a partition. Once you remove the partition, then uh, organic materials are coming. In this organic material, nearly 80 percent, 75 to 80 percent will be cattle eatable item. Five percent is a garden item, and five percent will be the eggshell and uh, uh, some of the coconut shell, lemon, orange peels, and other things are all. Five to 10 percent only compostable item. That means 80 percent cattle will finish eating and convert into dung. 
then it's a completely manual segregation so we segregate all the flowers and the other things uh, uh, fresh vegetables other things and then all fresh vegetable will be washed and then chop it pieces feed to cattle so we got our own goshala so minimum 35 kg one cattle will be appointed in our project and they will be converting that uh, organic into cow dung so this uh, 70 to 85 percent will complete this and then if you get the lemon orange musambi it all looks very fresh so you just we wash it and then uh, we need to convert into uh, powder and we it, it will be vessel washing powder we are so this is a uh, ratio we are um, mixing washing powder the first quality the fresh quality will call the uh, first quality citric fruits uh, citric uh, citric acid 25% cow dung ash and all we mix if it's a uh, second quality dirty lemon orange musambi will go for the toilet cleaning powder so that's how uh, we convert the lemon orange so that we don't want lemon orange to be uh, put in the composting because ph value will increase then all the extracts will be washed and it will be dried completely and then uh, uh, it will be uh, powdered uh, with the help of the pound and other things and then and the, this cash, uh, calcium powder will be packed in the bottles 300 rupees per kg for our uh, plants the organic farming other things and then if there is any tender coconuts coming uh, if it is a full tender coconut we are lucky so we make three holes in it and then uh, we fill the manure in it inside mulch only not uh, soil and then put uh, tree saplings like neem and then uh, based on that the sapling will start growing and uh, once the sapling starts growing uh, up to one feet then it will be sold for 50 rupees so we will plant the entire plant along with the coconut directly tender coconuts so this is how the tender coconuts will be handled and also there is a lot of other things uh, like to share later in the uh, discussion and all the inorganic will be segregated into 17 categories for example this is the inorganic items we throw all the plastic cover separately cardboard metal glass like that separately and then all the plastic cover it looks very fresh so we will wash it even if it is dirty it will be washed and then it will be uh, dried directly in the uh, hanging position like this and it will be stored in the storeroom later we will segregate into uh, 38 categories so now i like to show, show how the tertiary segregation works all these items are uh, taken to all for example these are plastic segregation units in uh, such as there and there uh, this is a tertiary segregation so the truck load of plastic bundles will come here from 22 watts and then um, all the uh, plastic bundles will then, um, each and every worker will segregate 10 bundles every day each later uh, they'll sit comfort She is aggregating the plastics into 64 varieties. Uh, it will be sold to Kabadiwala and that particular material will go to that factory directly. So that means uh, we are getting the best price from the factory directly. Like this cardboard, paper, metal, glass, everything will be segregated in the same method. And uh, our inorganic items uh, like uh, uh, wastewater. So here uh, we are making the drainages. This is a uh, um, we call uh, street level wastewater management. For this we are using the debris. We make the break the small stones or blue metal or something and then uh, whatever the uh, drainage where we are going to execute the project we are throwing the stones on the bottom of the drainages like this that water is, we never stop the water then put the mulch on the top put the mulch dry leaf mulch on the top then we plant the canna saplings which comes from the mother plant for saplings we already generated and this canna plant will be planted in the drainage directly on the left side then uh, in between the gap we fill the mulch the, all the mulch will be packed so that no soil is used 
then we will water it for uh, two or three weeks. After that, uh, the plants start uh, putting the roots in it. And then uh, after two months, we need not to worry about the entire water in the drainage will be taken by the plants. So uh, that means rain, uh, drainage water is not exposed to the mosquitoes and uh, there is no mosquito problem directly. And also, all the drainage looks very beautiful. Even the plastic covers try to fly and it will block in the leaves, not it never go into the water. And all the organic material will be converted into manure because the uh, bottom lot of uh, earthworms and other microorganisms, macroorganisms are there. Even the small, small pieces of organic metal fall from the kitchen also can be solved here. And the drainage is completely managed. This is street level. And if it is community level, if you want to do the same thing, yeah. uh, 350 families, uh, wastewater going to the sea directly. This is in Kerala, Kannur, where this is a military campus. There are 300, uh, 530 families, uh, wastewater going. So we are blocking the... Uh, soil and then uh, we make the mental block uh, clear now you can see now it's completely blocked and then uh, the water is uh, uh, just uh, stagnating then we bring the mulch uh, which is produced with the help of the dry leaves we are up. so the entire water is being sucked by the mulch and then on the top of the mulch we are cultivating the canna plants and also the banana trees especially the red color banana we are planting much more and then uh, first one week we need to water the roots uh, strengthen and later we need not to worry about anything the plants are settled down so not in a single drop it go to the sea this is a community level 350 families uh, sorry 530 families waste water never go out like that uh, community level waste water management with the help of the ducks we will treat and if it is individual families we give uh, seven banana trees uh, banana red color banana tubes uh, to each and every families and each and every drop will be sucked by the uh, plants. That means individual family wastewater never come to the street. We'll just plant uh, every five feet or six feet. It depends upon the places. So that our entire wastewater will be taken care. So um, I don't know whether my time is over. Uh, if it is more uh, discussion, I will I'll explain more. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, thank you so much for sharing your world-changing work with us. I think 10 minutes has not done justice to what you can share with us. So hopefully in the future, we'll have enough time uh, for us to see all that you're doing. And I think uh, not just for the, the work uh, that you're doing there, but I think it's so indispensable to our planet right now, the kind of work that you're doing for our planet because of the climate crisis and all the issues that we're facing. I think we need people like you in our world. So thank you so much for what you're doing. We really appreciate all the efforts and the hard work and your passion that you've put into your work. And hopefully we will learn from you. Um, and uh, in the future too, I hope we'll have more um, you know, knowledge and wisdom passed down from you to us so that we can implement here in Nagaland. Uh, one of our participants have raised uh, a hand, so I was wondering if we can give time and if you can answer. Uh, there is a participant named Lebatso, Lebatso no, Sono. If you're around, would you like to? Yeah, I'm, I'm there. So is there any, any doubts? I can explain, no issue. Yeah, just uh, uh, somebody has raised their hand, so I thought we'll give him time. Um, I he's not there now, so I can't find him. I think we'll move on, but thank you so much, Mr. Srinivas, and that was truly amazing, and we're just just floored by your presentation. Uh, we'll move on now next to Ms. Nixangla Jamir. She is from Nagaland, and she'll be uh, taking time now. Thank you. Start sharing, uh, Nikki. Yes. Hello, am I audible? Uh, um, good evening, everyone. So I think you have all seen the solution first, and we also know the problem. But you know, getting connected with the situation at hand, that's what we need to do because when we started this NGO in 2016, we have also been like all the other Nagas. We have been focused more on uh, finding a solution, cleaning up. But that time we realized that uh, we didn't have any data. We didn't have any information. 
and even the information that was generated by the government or was provided by the government was inaccurate. So that's why our NGO decided that we would focus first on the data collection. So we focus, we give uh, give a very uh, strong emphasis on research, and we believe that without data, you are just a person with an opinion. So before I start this presentation, I would first want to say this. Actually, why I'm not starting with my PPT is it's just four slides uh, to avoid repetition because I knew that my counterparts, the other panelists who are more vast learn, uh, who have more knowledge and experience in this field would cover almost everything. And I think me as well as all of us have seen that. For me, I'll be focusing more on this data collection so that I can connect whatever our other uh, panelists have shared with us. Now, if you look at this picture, this is the thumping site from Timavur. And if you look at the stumping site, uh, you can see, I think, can you see the animals? Can you see the children? So as per the rules, the thumping site is supposed to be cut off. It's supposed to be um, well walled so that no animals, no humans are allowed. But this is happening. And again, just adjacent to this dumping site, not even 10 kilometers, there's vegetable farm. And just for a record, all of us are actually buying vegetables from there because this uh, vegetables from this dump site is uh, taken to Marori Pati, that is the commercial, I mean, uh, that, that is a place where most people sell their um, wholesale vegetables. So just keep in mind that we are all having that and we don't realize that. And we always talk about, yes, we all know, okay, waste generation, we should do this, we should do that. But are we even, familiarizing ourselves with what is happening. So with that, I will just start this uh, slide. Can, yes. Now, if you look at the waste generation data, I don't know how many of you here now knows what is the waste generated in Nagaland. So according to the government, this is, there's 361 metric tons. And this is just from uh, 19 ULBs, keep in mind, there are, uh, there are territory ULBs in total. And this is the latest, uh, as far as we know, this is in August, 2019. Now the question is how accurate is this? Next. Now, if you look at this picture, we talk about, when we talk about uh, waste management, most is like important is the data collection. Like uh, the esteemed panel, Mr. Sri Vasan has said, how many types of waste is generated? If we have that idea, we know what is the, we, now we know the problem, we can tackle the, so, tackle the problem and we can come up with a solution. But this is not, uh, the data collection system is not there in Nagaland. Next. And this is why it's important. If we know what is in our trash, we know what to do with the problem. So, so out of this 33 ULBs, we can, I can just say that only two data, um, generation data is sort close to accurate and that is uh, please next. Dimawa Municipal Council and Chumukdima Town Council. And why this is because we we were the ones who actually uh, as a, I mean assist the waste generation and we did a uh, data collection. So with Jumu, we did it in 2018. And in Timawa, uh, in with Timawa Municipal Council, we did it in 2019. And I will be focusing more on Timavur because we all know Timavur is the commercial hub of Nagaland. Also, the, we did a very extensive work in Timavur with the, this uh, Timavur Municipal Council. Next. So now we also wanted to know like how much waste was being generated, what was the data that had, they had. So in 2018, apparently they had uh, they did some uh, assessment and in that year, 2018, it was 100 tons per day. And this was assessed by taking the drugs to the weighing bridge. So we didn't, uh, they didn't know how, what, was, uh, what kind of waste was being generated. So when we, we did the assessment, it was in February to March, 24 days. So during that time, it came to 111.12 tons per day. Next. 
Now in this, you can see like, uh, yes, also thing is like we have this two system. I think it's present everywhere. There's commercial and door to door. So with door to door, this was the weight and with market collection, the, this was the weight. So all together, it is like 100 and, 111 dons per day. But keep this in mind, this is also not accurate. Even if we did the uh, collection assessment, it was not accurate because there was two colonies which were not covered, even the, and also the collection system was very haphazard. So that was a problem. So we cannot say this is even accurate. Next. So now if we look at the composition and characterization, so this is the amount of waste that's been generated in the mobile. So you can see dry waste, wet waste, and mixed waste. And all this, uh, when we talk about dry waste, and as earlier, uh, Mr. Sri Nivasan has already mentioned the types of waste that is being generated. So most of this waste could be recycled, and especially the wet waste. All this was organic, but this was all sent to the dumping site. Now, even the mixed waste was the most, but among the mixed waste, 80% was organic waste. Only 20% was rejects. So you uh, look at this. So we are actually like losing out on a lot. All this can be utilized, but we are just like ignoring that. Next. So just four items. We were also show only four items were being recycled. During, uh, during the assessment, we were like, you know, uh, following the sanitation workers and what all waste they were uh, picking up. So glass bottle, carton, pet bottles, aluminum cans. These were the only four items that they were searching for and they were selling it. Uh, cartons, uh, I mean, sorry, books to a certain extent, but it was very limited. So this was the only four categories of tri waste that was being salvaged. So during our assessment, we found that there was 119 items altogether, uh, 74 tri waste and 45 wet waste. Those items were the one we would identify. And out of all the waste, the one waste that was giving a lot of problem and most people was generating was surprisingly and not surprisingly also diapers. The sanitary waste was the maximum waste that was been generated. So if you look at all this, we know the problem. I think we all know like these are the waste we're being generated. We also know the solution it's not that we don't know, but we're just not coming to terms with this situation at hand and that we need to like do something. As uh, from our part, since I've also said, we are looking at the research, we are actually helping the government formulate plans, formulate uh, plans and also like um, bylaws and all, but it is for like the community and the people to come together now especially we're facing a problem with this organic waste. We have, uh, as far as I know, there's three organizations who are dealing with this waste management, e-waste, uh, e-circle, which are dealing with e-waste. They're actually doing really well, but the thing is uh, they are not able to channelize all the e-waste generated even from Timago. And even uh, there's another one, a uh, black shade, they are dealing with fecal waste. But uh, for them also, the problem is like they are not getting the waste, the, the resource. And then there's pro uh, pro rural who are dealing with uh, organic waste. But I don't know how far uh, they, were, uh, they have been able to uh, address the situation. So my point is this, this is just one part. And for us, we were fortunate enough to visit the whole of Nagaland last year. And we know the situation, this is just one of one of the problem, it's happened. It's the same everywhere. Even if you say in rural areas, it's the same, honestly. And even in rural areas, we're generating the same kind of waste that is being generated in urban areas. So I think with uh, what I wanted to share with you all today was like, this is the situation and we also need to do something. And so with that, I will just end this because uh, I think our counterparts our, has already explained everything really well in detail. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nikki. I think uh, you're one of the few people who are addressing this issue in our land. And uh, we must look up to you and we must uh, join you in, uh, you know, uh, finding the solutions for our, uh, not only for urban areas, but for villages, because like you said, I agree, 
the villages are producing the same amount of waste and there is no recycling facility, no composting knowledge. I mean, the few here and there probably are doing, but even in Dimapur or even in Kohima, households, many households, majority of the households from my experience, I think we're just burning our trash or just throwing away and nothing is being segregated. So thank, thank you so much for taking us to the right direction in the in in the waste management area and we really need you so thank you for your presentation and i agree we need facts and figures and with people like you we have hope so thank you so much um so now i think we'll open the question and answer session i'm sure our attendees have many questions to ask our acclaimed and uh, expert panelists so i'll open the question and answer session uh, Abukali, may I ask one question? Abukali, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think you, can, you can first take the questions that are already in the question answer box, uh, also in the chat box. Okay. Before that, I think uh, uh, Sandeep has one question. I'll give it to him. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Abukali. Uh, Srinivasan, so now, you know, one question, one point which was raised by Nikki was about this uh, diapers and sanitary uh, waste. That is part one. And second is after this COVID, we are finding a lot of plastic waste with this PPE and masks and all these things. So uh, can you comment on these two things, on the sanitary waste and this new COVID post waste? Can you oh, release my uh, screen so that I can show? I'm not able to show anything. Can you release my uh, pictures? Now you can show. Now you can show. Um, actually, uh, in our concept, because the time is very limited, I'm not able to tell everything, but I'd like to share with this sanitary napkins issue right now. Um, uh, while we are giving the two buckets uh, to every family, um, so the two buckets we are giving uh, for each and every family uh, for putting organic and inorganic items. Huh? Um, here, uh, along with that, we are also providing one information board. Uh, what is organic? What is inorganic? Uh, what are the items you have to throw in the green color bucket and red color bucket? Then very important things we have to tell them is uh, what they should do, what they should not do. Both in their local language and English back-to-back -back printer. And this is A3 size calendar. It will be uh, hanged in the wall. Then we give one uh, small uh, cloth bag for the hair. And then we give two, uh, three sketch pencils for each and every family. So that uh, we ask the people to pack all the non-vegetarian in the newspaper and bundle, uh, bundle it and mark with the green color line and put in the bundle into green color bucket. So that non, no non-vegetarian should be in the green color bucket directly. So that smell will attract and uh, the cattle never eat the vegetables. The same thing, sanitary pad and diaper, uh, sanitary, uh, uh, sanitary cloth, then condoms, all these things will be packed in the newspaper and marked with a red color line, line. So once it is being thrown in the red color bucket, then we collect it. Uh, all the packets will be collected uh, at the segregation point, And then it will be uh, handled like this. For example, this is a today's collection of uh, sanitary pads and uh, whatever it is there in the packet, it is there. And uh, we dig a pit in the highways roads where tree plantation going to happen. Every uh, 20 feet or every 15 feet, there will be a pit, uh, three into three into four, four feet depth pit. And then we uh, throw all the sanitary pad in the cow dung water. Before that, we take a pan and uh, put some fresh cow dung and then pour water and dilute it like this and throw all the sanitary packets without opening it directly so that all the paper will get wet and the moisture will go into the pad. That means bacteria is entered. And then we throw in the pit directly and uh, throw some thin layer of soil on the top and cover with the metal plate so that people should not fall in that metal plate. And every day the petal plate will be removed and this metal will be thrown. It will take six months to fill one single pit from 256 families. End of this, uh, the whole bed will be completed like this, end of the six months like this. And then on the top, we cover the mud. Again, we leave it for another six months and then plant the entire sanitary pads. That's how we handle the sanitary pads. It's not only highways, roads, any institutions or any place where there's a boundary wall. So uh, we uh, try to do the same thing in the institutions also, where there's a boundary wall, where tree plantation will be happening, where there's no construction happening there. This is about the sanitary pad and sanitary items.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Avokali, over to you. Yeah, so uh, we have a question from sir, one of our- Can you stop our... sharing your screen? Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have one question. Uh, okay. What kind of wastewater is used for growing the kana plants, the banana stumps? I think this is for uh, Srinivasan, the, the picture, the video that you showed us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, normally uh, in the houses, uh, we people in the kitchen, we got 10 liter can. So uh, we'll use it directly for, uh, like for example, I can share, you, share with this. Um, so this is a no, everyday 10 liter or 15 liter water in our own kitchen. Uh, this, is a, this is a small cloth filter. Then it will be filtered. All the organic material which is there will be filtered. Then uh, this is purely from the kitchen. It's called gray water. So now the gray water is ready. And uh, we'll use this water directly to our kitchen garden, terrace garden. This is terrace garden. So that means nutrition is completely packed in this nutrition water and we are using it for our green leaf vegetables in our own terrace. So this is about the liquid organ, we call it as a gray water and also it's purely kitchen water. And there is a water which is coming from the bathroom, uh, cloth washing, then floor washing, then wash basin, uh, vessel washing sink, all these things, gray water, it can go directly to the banana trees. Uh, only one thing is the black water which is going for the uh, soak pit and it will be absorbed by the soil and the soil bacteria will take care. But in the common drainages, both grey water and black water is mixing and coming. So in that case, uh, canna plants will uh, take care of everything. That's not a, We need not worry about this because we are not going to eat the canna plants. So here all these vegetables are there, so we never use the black water only. for the um, uh, terrace bar soap, yellow, yellow colored bar soap, which is coming from the Kadi, Kadi shop. So that bar soap is enough for washing our cloth and also good for our screen, skin. And the water coming out after washing the cloth, that water is very good for our plants. So try to avoid blue color soaps and blue color powder, which is called, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, turf and other things, whatever you call it, that, that blue color powder is to be avoided. Detergents, all detergents should be avoided for this. Um, okay, the, the other question is, um, do you have any training sessions that people can attend? Yeah, because uh, of this COVID issue, we are not able to conduct any training program because it's called Solid and Liquid Resource Management Master Trainers Training Program. It's a uh, eight days uh, theory and a uh, 12 days practical training. Joint together 20 days training program for all the uh, people who are going to work full time in this project. Mm -hmm. But you can support uh, through the Zoom meetings, one one topics, there is a uh, different topics are there. So I can share my syllabus. So if people are interested in that particular topic, I'm ready to take the classes through Zoom. Great, great, thank you. So I think this, this question is now for both uh, Savita and Srinivasan. Um, somebody wants to know how the e-waste was handled in, the, in your respective project areas. Uh, actually, I'm not dealing much about the uh, e-waste. I just uh, pack everything and hand out to the concerned person who are mentioned in the pollution control board list, in state pollution control board, so that that material will go to the e-waste specialist because I'm not specialized in uh, e-waste. So they are taking directly and they are handling directly. So my side, uh, I'm not uh, having any specific question for uh, answer for this uh, e-waste. Okay, thank you. How about uh, Savita, ma'am? I think she's not there. Abukali. Yeah. Abukali. There's a raised hand. Kindly give time to the raised hand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Lilika Jimomi also. Um Lilika Jimomi. Lilika Jimomi. Yes. Yeah. Lilika Jimomi. Uh I, I wonder what she is. Okay. Yes. I just allow her to speak. Yeah, please go ahead, Lilika. She can speak now, Lilika. She's taking permission, 
she's muted. Uh, Lilika, you have to unmute yourself if you have to ask question. You're still muted. I think she's gone, I think, because she raised hand uh, earlier. So maybe she's now gone. Uh, we okay, so we can't hear from her. Um, another question uh, from our side I want to ask is how how is the uh, your municipal corporations or your uh, governments, your local governments or local administrative bodies? How are you uh, collaborating with them, or how do they assist? How do you work together? How does it work there? Uh, one minute, sir, before you answer. Abokali, Savita is back, so you can ask her the last question. Uh, hi, Savita. I think. Yes, yeah, I had to log out because, uh, you know, this uh, lagging over and again. Tell me. So, um, there's a participant who wants to know how you manage e waste in your project area. You can put off the camera, Savita Ji, so then it's better. If you can put off your camera, then maybe we can hear you. Yeah. Yes, I Please think go so. Ahead. Um, I think there's some problem with her connectivity. In the meantime, can I just uh, yeah, put up these questions that we have uh, from the participants? Which state in India is the best in waste management? Please elaborate on it. I think Mr. Srinivasan um, can tell us. Um, Right now, as per my calculation, um, uh, wherever I'm introducing solid and liquid resource management, resource management, there we are able to see the good results. For example, in 2015 and 16, I was involved in. Uh, uh, so there, Ambikapur, uh, this girl uh, plays very important role now. Um, where we can see the dumping grounds, uh, the, the dumping ground was closed in Ambikapur. Um, just like to share with this. This is a dumping site while I was, okay. was there. 42 year old garbage dumping site. Forty-two year old garbage dumping site and 22 acre land of garbage. So this was completely closed and we recovered the entire land. And uh, based on this result, now uh, more than five or six uh, uh, districts, they have taken forward this project. And now, as per my knowledge, Chhattisgarh State uh, taking the lead in um, solid and liquid resource management. Whatever the, sea, whatever the, uh, the dumping site you've seen, same thing within uh, eight months' time. How it has changed, I'd like to show the final result. Uh, if you give permission, I can give the complete uh, stage by stage. But... Uh, because of the time issue, I'm just showing the final result in eight months' time. Same dumping site is like a tourism place. So this all happened in eight months' time, and uh, we recovered it. So as per my knowledge, I can say Chhattisgarh state uh, plays very important role in India. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, so another question for you. How many state governments in India do you work with? Uh, one of the participants want to know. Uh, right now, I'm involved in 23 states in India. Last uh, 2014 onwards, I'm involving in this project. Uh, last uh, six years, I'm traveling all over India. And uh, 23 states, I already uh, introduced this concept. Only 15 states uh, started the project. At least minimum, one pilot project. And a lot of other projects are developing parallelly. And uh, some uh, portion, like maybe 75% uh, they're uh, utilizing this concept, 25% they don't want to. For example, some of the people, they don't want to involve the cattle. 
some of the people they don't want to put the biogas plant like that some of the portions are missing but still uh, this is a very simple solution and uh, my latest uh, development in this project is northeast india sikkim uh, sorry uh, um, silchar silchar is my last uh, project while i'm coming back uh, after covid so nearly uh, i was there in sikkim for 8 months now the uh, uh, silchar the silchar uh, going to be the regional training institute for slrm also in future so that uh, this model going to play a very important role for northeast india great okay thank you another question for you um how effective is the result if we install biogas digested in vegetable market biogas digested sorry i don't know what it means um i guess digester yeah you know, you know. yeah yeah digester yeah. okay yeah in in the vegetable market how effective is the result is what they're asking um actually uh, directly in a vegetable market we never uh, use it instead of that we take the vegetables and uh, for example uh, as per I, i just left one thing as per the slrm concept uh, we collect every 12 hours in the residential areas this is a every 12 hours collection system in the residential areas and every 6 hours collection in the food generating places like mess canteen for other things every 4 hours collection in the bulk generators so that means all your vegetable markets are coming under the bulk generators every 4 hours so that means every 4 hours collection will be taken to the nearest goshala or we create our own goshala or our cattle shelter and then um, uh, every 4 hours central that's very important so here you can see uh, every 4 hours we are bringing the vegetables this is in mysore city every 4 hours it looks very fresh we are bringing it directly from the buckets in their shopkeepers and it is unloaded in our trice vehicle and the vehicle came to the goshala now you can see all these are very fresh vegetables and uh, then we will uh, clean it and then we chop into then after this uh, immediately we will uh, give it to the taxa <laughs> spread this spread it uh, that means all our vegetables will be given to the cattle directly and uh, convert into dung all cattle we call it as dry cow and this is madiwala market where Vegetables, uh, vegetable market materials collected to the sent to the white field. There is a cattle feeding chamber. We open the gate. The cattle will enter into our dining uh, room. And then uh, within one hour fifteen minutes, at one hour fifteen minutes, we enter the room. that thing is there everything is finished whatever we say garbage it is a pakka raw material for these cattle these all cattle are dry cows uh, no milk and these cattle are surviving with the vegetables you can see not in a single piece is found there everything is completely licked and it is cleared that means whatever we say garbage it is a pakka raw material for other uh, other life all these fr vegetables fruits are coming coming from the market so we chop into pieces before that it will be clean and then fed to the cattle and then it could put it in the biodigester as a dung so if you put the biodigester directly into the bio market area plenty of fiber items are coming that fiber item item should not be thrown in the biogas plant we need only carbohydrate materials and food items so better we can shift to nearest place and there you can process it and then feed it to the biogas plant that will be good okay well, thank you so much for your answers um now there is another question which i think i'll ask all the all our panelists uh somebody wants to know what's the best method to dispose uh, mobile phones since we don't have uh, many facilities here i don't i think people don't know how to dispose of their mobile phones so what would be the best method uh, according to you savita ji maybe can ask savita ji i hope so yeah yeah thank you in case of bangalore what happens is we have these uh, the e waste recyclers 
uh, electronic waste recy- recyclers and um, usually you know from apartments and all that we uh, um, separate uh, three types of waste right that is kitchen waste dry waste dry waste includes uh, e waste as well metal waste and plastic and paper waste all all put together it becomes dry waste and then that dry waste is further segregated into various categories and one of them is e waste once is once we separate that e waste there is this um, an organization called parisara e parisara actually and uh, they uh, they collect it from uh, all these it co- it bt companies and basically from corporates uh, these corporates tie up with them and then e parisara takes care of uh, e waste there is they uh, you know extract a lot of uh, reusable material from these uh, from this waste that's one way of doing it at um, uh, community level uh, we have these uh, local e waste recyclers who come and pick up um, you know um, electronic waste from apartments and all and uh, that is how we are disposing it off second way a uh, third is you know we uh, during our campaigns and all that we encourage all these uh, you know corporates to uh, put a you know recycling bin outside their uh, stores and uh, that again uh, finally has to gets collected by another recycler this is the only way to dispose of uh, e waste whether it is mobile phones or any type of e waste uh, there has to be a system that has to be put in place one individual can't do much about it because uh, one mobile phone uh, you know if it is discarded has no value but if there are 100 phones the, again uh, you know it's all about aggregation and then the value uh, builds up uh, depending on the volume right thanks thank you so uh, in connection to that i think uh, i want to ask uh, ms uh, nixangla since in nagaland if you still there since in nagaland we don't really have this collection system you've mentioned about the e waste uh, collect- collection by an organization so at the moment how are we doing it and what are your views how can we actually uh, you know uh, manage this e waste in nagaland so being a lawyer i always say we already have all the foundation the everything is there in the rule, rules but for e waste uh, battery waste there's a thing called pro producer responsibility organization so this is uh, uh, somewhat like epr uh, i think you're familiar with this concept extended producer responsibility mm-hmm. so it's like every producer's responsibility to make sure that any product the mac mm-hmm. which is not recyclable through a uh, normal way it has to be sent to them right so this is what is missing in nagaland so uh, right now at the moment like i was saying this e circle they are collecting this e waste and uh, this e circle is not even a pro the the bro is in producer responsibility uh, organization is in calcutta and e circle is an agent for that company and they are collecting the waste so as of now they are collecting the waste only from chumu timabur and koima and only in certain areas so what we can do at the moment as uh, concerned citizens we can actually request the municipal or the town council to tie up with this organizations uh, this e circle and then we can channelize all this e waste to them because uh, the problem in nagaland is we cannot uh, i mean the public actually don't know their rights yes if the public actually demands that this waste has to be disposed of properly then the companies have no other option but to actually open this bros yes. in notice but unfortunately we don't do that so all this e waste is actually handled by all those uh, i think i think you have seen all this the shops in nagaland the small shops where they just take all the cell phones and for them they are actually not disposing it up properly so right. the only place way for nagaland is right now at the moment the e circle because as far as we know they are sending it to a registered and registered and authorized e uh, e waste processor uh, recycler organization in calcutta mm-hmm. right so um, still one more question for you so uh, since this e circle is only uh, concerned with i mean right now maybe based on the resources also only kohima and dimapur 
what about the villages? Uh, is there something that you have thought of, or is I mean, what do you think would be a solution for the villages, at least for now? What can we do? Uh, we are actually looking right now at a plan, which is a most of a holistic approach. So what we're trying to do is like sort of uh, ask the government to act as per the rules. So as per the rules, the government, I mean, the ULBs have to collect all the waste. But the problem is sending the waste to the destination. So now we are working and looking at ways that that can be possible because uh, as we all know, our the condition of our government at the same time, we also know the condition of the resources or the amenities that the government has. So to transport all this waste is a problem, but we are looking into that, whether like, you know, the other government vehicles or private entities can be uh, utilized, mm -hmm. but we are also looking at that. So you're not related to E-Circle, I mean, but you know them. So if this participant want to uh, dispose his mobile phone, he has to contact the E-Circle or how, because we don't know about, many people, many people don't know about E-Circle. So how, at this point in time, how do we do it? All right, then the best answer, solution is this. Example, uh, with your community or with your area. So you can start this. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, with your community, like uh, Ma'am Savita was saying, a pin, you can have a pin, which is only for e-waste. So collect all this waste, and then you, at the end of every month, you can call e-circle, and they will come and collect. Because uh, e-circle also, they will not just come for one phone, <laughs> since they are a business entity. So like, if you can collect it, and it's like, you know, at least 10, 20 kgs, they will come. And so that can be done. Or another option is, uh, you go to the uh, ULB, the town council, and tell them, like, collect the EU waste also and generalize it to E circle. So that will be their duty. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. So, to our participant, I think it's a great opportunity for you to start a bin with all the e waste that can be handed over to um, the E circle. Right. Okay. So, another question we have here uh, is vegetable waste. I think for both Savita and Srinivasan, Vegetable waste and food waste, when decomposed, produce methane that adds to increase in global warming. So what is your take in this issue? Can I answer the question? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, Savita. Please go ahead, uh, Savita. All right, OK. See, uh, methane gets released only when anaerobic uh, conditions set in. So if you do the process uh, properly um, by uh, mixing an uh, equal amount of carbon and nitrogen uh, content into your composting bin, whether it is at um, uh, home composting level or community composting level, when the process is running properly, then there is no worry of uh, it releasing methane. Eve, you know, what gets actually released is CO2 and water. Uh, so, but, but actually, but when you, um, you know, go wrong with the process, when uh, anaerobic uh, conditions set in, releasing, uh, uh, you know, um, foul odors and all that, that is when uh, methane is getting released. So if you take, make sure that, you know, you, you get, the, you understand a little bit of uh, science about the science of composting, uh, then you will have no issues um, with, um, you know, um, methane being produced. It's all in how you do it. Ima one, one thing to remember, if you're doing it right, then there are no issues with it. But if you're not doing it right, you know, if you're not putting in the right kind of ingredients, if you're not getting the balance, the balance of it, uh, uh, balance of the contents right, then the, the, the problem occurs. So otherwise, you have nothing to worry about methane. Thank you. Great, thank you. And uh, sir, do you have any comment uh, on that? Can you uh, open the screen? I'm not able to show anything. But at the end of the time, so the, the question is about methane. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can you release it? I'm not able yeah, one minute. 
it goes off i'm sorry it Normally, the methane generation will happen in the dumping sites, uh, especially the garbage has been piled uh, like a big, big mountains. For example, this is 45 meters. Where, uh, normally, people never see the, the methane, but here you can see the methane, how it's coming out. Because here, heavy rain, the water is stagnating on the top of the 45 meter. So, the, the same time the methane is coming out, uh, so the time water is stagnating, the methane pushing the water out and coming out. You can see this is the methane produced. On the garbage dumping sites. Only in, on the garbage, wherever there's a uh, road where the garbage trucks are moving, bottom of this area is completely garbage and the uh, methane is re released regularly. Because of the heavy rain, the water is stagnating on the top surface. You can see the methane is coming out. So the methane generation is a huge uh, production happening everywhere in the garbage dumping site. The production of our SLR projects and all, the composting beds are a uh, little bit high raised beds. And also its uh, size is mentioned 12 into 6 into 6. And also a lot of air circulation methods have been followed. Because of that, methane generation can be completely stopped. And also in our SLRM concept, more than 80% is a dung. The dung has been generated from the uh, fresh vegetables and uh, it is taken to a biogas plant. So the methane is properly and scientifically trapped through the biogas plant and it is used in our kitchen. And the remaining only 10%, the volume is very, very less. The 10% goes to the composting project. Even the organic material, which is uh, having carbohydrate and food item, can go into the biodigester directly. So in that case, uh, uh, if you follow the SLRM concept, the volume of organic materials will be very, very less. And uh, the compost bed will be uh, 12 feet length and 6 feet breadth. And uh, there is a lot of holes we make with the help of crowbars, end of the bed. And it's a high, rate, high raised platform also. So in that uh, case, oxygen flow will be very good. Okay, so, so so now um, I think we run out of time. So we'll just have a last question from anyone who has who wants to ask. Any last question? There are two questions in the question box. Okay, you can just take one. Um, okay, how to handle waste from vehicle, garage, oil, acid? Etc. Actually, uh, here I never handle all these things, but uh, whatever the oil is coming out uh, from a different category, we recommend it to use for the road, road lying time. Uh, whenever you make a tar road, that is mid road, they put some waste oil on the bottom of the flow road, and then they put the vitamin with the help of uh, stones and all. The time they use the oil, that time we can use this type of oil so that it is completely packed in the road system and the bottom layer. So uh, without disposing some uh, uh, in a pit or uh, some other tank or bury all these things, this will be better than this. I could not give the exact answer, but I can give some uh, uh, common solution. Okay, great. Thank you. So to round up this session, uh, uh, the topic, our to remembering our topic, the wealth in waste, we have a relevant question that says, um, can you clarify on the topic as in the wealth in waste management, how is it coming along in terms of profits and loss? I think this is for all the panelists. Yeah. So this is the income and expenditure. If you follow the SLRM concept, for, the waste, for, ex for example, the West Bengal. The West Bengal rural area garbage value is 208 crore but we are missing it because we are not handling it in scientific method. Like this, each and every state we can calculate. And also per year, West Bengal's uh, rural garbage value is around 1,604 crores. Through this, 4, 4 lakh, 16 lakh women will get job opportunities. This is about the West Bengal. The biggest state in India is the UP. Mm -hmm. Same thing. In UP also, uh, where we can um, gen uh, calculate uh, 2 rupees per family's garbage, uh, if you collect in systematic manner before 12 hours, so this is the value of uh, UP, um, rural area garbage value. And per year, we can generate this much. And around 6.4 lakh uh, women will get job opportunities. Uh, they will get 6,000 rupees per month. We don't want central government support. We don't want state government support. We don't want BDO support or district collector support. Only one thing we request, require, only three rupees per family per day. And also whatever the material we collect, it will be scientifically segregated and send it to the appropriate factories. Then the payment can be easily made for them. 
Wonderful. Okay. Um, Savita, could you also? Are you there? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. You could also share your experience, please. Yes, see, I have not worked at uh, such a large scale as Mr. Srinivasan has done. Uh, my work is uh, more limited to uh, community, you know, at a community level and at uh, Bangalore level. Um, actually, when it comes to um, uh, utilizing kitchen waste, what happens is uh, when you turn it into compost or whatever, so it has its it carries its own value now we are understanding the value of it at uh, bangalore level through our uh, compost connect program there are so many farmers coming and buying it and apartments are also making some money out of it you know and secondly dry waste you know just my my, uh, my community is hardly 202 homes and uh, in 2012 13 um, we used to make uh, more than uh, you know 7 to 8000 rupees per month just by selling our uh, dry waste so, um, you know, it all depends on how well it is segregated. If, you, if at all you try to take anything out of mixed waste, then it loses its value. So when we talk about wealth in waste, uh, the first thing we need to remember is that, you know, the quality of segregation has to be high. The higher the quality, the greater the value it fetches. So both are completely interconnected. Right. So thank you so much. And in connection with that, I, mean, I think when we talk about wealth, it's not only so much about profit or in cash terms, but it's also about uh, the quality of our soil, which directly impacts our health. So health is wealth. So it's also to do with our health and the health of our planet. So um, I think it's really important to view from that point of view also. Um, so with that, I think we shall, end with a few um, comments from all the panelists and we end our session. We have one more question, but I don't know if we can take it, if we have time to take it. We need the takeaways from the panelists also. So. Yes. So we'll just, uh, I think we will answer that later on since we are running out of time. Uh, we want, we want to thank all the panelists and I give you time now to, um, you know, share a few, a line or two from all the panelists. I think we'll start with Savita, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, all I would like to say is, uh, you know, when we talk of waste, it looks like a very big problem. Uh, but it can be uh, tackled at uh, an individual level uh, to make it, uh, you know, make the, the entire mound look smaller. Uh, it is more like, you know, you, we are trying to instill uh, in individual responsibility through some such uh, initiatives. So it is better if Nagaland, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, starts uh, campaigns at a very, very um, individual uh, levels like uh, families and uh, communities, schools, institutes, offices and all that. And uh, th that's how it can be done. Um, in my experience, what I have seen is, you know, no machinery can uh, work as efficiently as, you know, um, uh, two hands, uh, you know, can do, especially when it comes to segregation. And uh, composting is something, you know, it used to be a riddle. It used to be a mystery back in, two th in you know, 10 years ago. But it's not so anywhere. We have so many solutions these days. You know, my blog has 19 of them uh, recorded. Actually, I have studied and written about 19 composting methods. I still have some three, four to go. Um, all I can say is there are so many solutions. Uh, there is even biogas solution if you really want to implement. Um, so the, all that it needs is your will to make it happen. As you very beautifully put it, Abakli, the thing is, it's we can't be looking at it as only you know at a very monetary aspect of it. Uh, what we should be thinking about is the certain intangibles that come attached with it, you see. Um, for instance, in my community, when we stopped spraying pesticides, when we stopped, uh, you know, when we started using our own compost for our garden and turned it into an organic garden, um, we stopped, uh, you know, air pollution from happening, we stopped water pollution from happening because uh, we were using our own compost and no more chemical fertilizers and uh, pesticides. And we also stopped soil pollution from happening, you know. Right. So it's sort of, once you start doing one positive thing, it starts building up and then a, a complete positive cycle builds up. 
so we have to look at both tangible benefit benefits from uh, waste management as well as intangible benefits most often people don't look at the uh, second one you know we only look at the money part of it so how much we are saving out of it is something uh, all of us have to keep it in mind thanks Thank you so much for your time. For all those who are listening and who wants to get to know more about what Savita is doing and all the composting methods that uh, she has researched, you can go to her blog, Endlessly Green, and her website is savitaheremat.com. So you can visit that. Thank you. Now, uh, Srinivasan, please. Yeah, actually, for Nagaland, it's, it's not only for Nagaland. Any part of the world, uh, the vegetables are vegetables. So there's no new vegetables I'm saying. So vegetables are vegetables, organic is organic only, the dry leaves, grass cuttings, bushes, everything's common. So, but uh, whatever we collect from the kitchen, every 12 hours, if you collect as a community and bring it to a common place and give it to the cattle and convert it into dung, it will be the very simple solution. And the dung will be, uh, that means one third will be the final product of dung. The dung will goes to the biodigester. For uh, 72 hours maximum, the methane will be trapped and it can be taken to vermic past and uh, black gold will be ready. So in that case, uh, whatever we generate, it should be removed from the house uh, less than 12 hours. That's that's the only way and only and only way to handle it very effectively and self-sustainably can be done. If you allow it to take uh, stay in your home for more than 12 hours, uh, that means 24 hours per full day, very next day morning, definitely there is a smell and uh, people who are going to work in that uh, will be very difficult. And also already flies laid the eggs and uh, whatever the organic material we are piling in the compost bed, full of flies will come out from this. So. Try to uh, handle the organic material less than 12 hours and uh, finish it in that uh, community level itself. All right. Less than 12 hours. We must remember that. Thank you so much. Uh, Nikki? Uh, yes. So like uh, Ma'am Savita has said, uh, we always say waste is not a problem. Management is. And what Nagaland right now needs is management and management from grassroot level and that comes segregation. We all need to do segregation. We have done a lot of research. We have uh, met people who were very interested in waste management, but uh, when we visited their colony and we looked into their garbage, the waste was all unsegregated. So this becomes a problem with us. So we need to now relearn everything. We have learned something and which is not good for us. So we need to now unlearn that and relearn something new. So we have to change this behavior mindset. I think uh, uh, the other panelists have said what all we can do. And also, I also uh, wanted to say like regarding the report that we have done, the assessment, it you it's available uh, it's available on the TMC website. So you can just take a look. Everything is there. Uh, it's a very exhaustive report, but I think you will get very, better insights. And anyone who's interested in doing this uh, waste and wealth, there is a lot of wealth actually. You can get a lot of information and also you can take a look at our website to know all our work, uh, lifenagaland.org. So in the end, I would also want to say that, you know, uh, what we need, I mean, with what we have realized is what we need in this field of waste management is not experts. Obviously, we need experts to tell us what to do, but we need people who are committed, committed to the cause, even if it means, like you said, you are losing something. We lose profit, but we are really committed to this work because we want to make Nagaland safe, green, healthy for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely agree. I think all the uh, participants, uh, including the NOK members, everybody, what we've learned today is something very basic, but something really crucial that is to segregate our waste and how to start uh, how to start the community, how to start mobilizing the community to start segregating waste. I think that is what we have really learned today. And I would like now to uh, give the time to Dr. Akali for a few uh, closing words. Okay. Uh, thank you, Abokali. And uh, I just want to say a few, uh, uh, propose a lot of thanks to our panelists, uh, a wonderful panelists. Uh, uh, Sri Nivasan, uh, Savita, and Nixangla, Nikki, better known. Thank you so much for your wonderful sharing, a lot of stories, a lot of insights, and I'm sure uh, we'll be able to um, take something forward from here. And the uh, attendees, there are a lot many people who are already working in this uh, waste management, and so we hope that we will be able to do 
something together and um, uh, we look forward to having more sessions and uh, as asked by the participant regarding the training, uh, I think uh, we'll have to take the word from uh, Srinivasan that uh, uh, we can go for some virtual training because NOK had been uh, thinking about taking the next level of uh, webinars on the practical live demonstration. So I think this is a good opportunity for us to get back to uh, your technologies, your uh, inputs, and uh, I hope that Nagaland can benefit a lot from there again. So we as NOK, we would like to thank all of you, the panelists, and also not forgetting uh, Sandeep uh, for your uh, every, you know, all the help and support and hosting this program as well. And to all the participants for actively participating in interaction, interacting with the panelists. Uh, through you, we have also learned a lot of things and we hope that we all will work together and uh, make this uh, Nagalan uh, possibly a West free in years to come. So we hope to see you again in the next webinar, uh, which we'll announce shortly. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, they, uh, somebody wants to know about the recording. Uh, yeah, we would, uh, I think those who uh, respond to our feedback, uh, we, along with the e-certificate, we may also be, you know, sending you the recorded uh, program. Otherwise, uh, it's also available in the YouTube. You can always go to the YouTube uh, and you'll get all the, you know, recordings of this program. Thank you. Shall I end the meeting, Akali Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks you a lot. Much.